What's going on everybody, Quake here, bringing you another video. Today we have a new build for Windows 11 in the dev channel. As you already know, it is also in the beta channel so you can check it out. But looking at the build, uh, here it is, Insider Preview Build 22,000.132. Once again, one huge positive highlight that I can say about this build is the fact that these builds or just all the builds in general for Windows 11, they download and they update and restart your computer so fast. I don't have to go and take a shower, eat my dinner, um, go outside for a run and come back and it's still barely done. They just finish so quickly and I really like that. I hope this is how it's gonna be going forward. Of course, every time you're updating Windows 11, it does say it's a cumulative update. Um, so take it that, but here it is the build. There are some changes and improvements. I did not look at the previous build just because it was just a bunch of bug fixes and I didn't really see a point in making a video on that. But this 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 build 132.132 has some meat to it. So this build has a uh, chat from Microsoft Teams is now available to uh, insiders in the dev channel. And then they're also rolling out uh, one to one and group audio and video calling with uh, a lot of features that you didn't expect. That's what they say here. They say you can create and join meetings. You can toggle your microphone and camera on and off. Choose your preferred speakers, mic, camera. Um, you can manage meeting information. Basically, this is their way to uh, showcase a free kind of another alternative to Zoom, essentially. Um, so people can just use it right off the bat when it's ready in the fall for everybody to just get Windows 11 in their actual computers and not be on these builds. And then the core reason why I wanted to make this video was just because uh, we have finally some refreshed apps that we can actually try. So I'm gonna show you that. Um, as you saw today's video as a recording on August 12th, um, the video that came up today, I did showcase um, some screenshots of these upcoming redesigned apps and yeah, so here they are, the inbox apps for Windows 11. Some of them have been refreshed, including the snipping tool for Windows 11, the calculator, mail, and the calendar apps um, in this dev channel build. And no, I'm barely not gonna click on this thing because I'm gonna show you it. There are some fixes and things like that, but you can read that on your own. It says here for Windows Sandbox, for example, taskbar or explorer.exe uh, should no longer repeatedly crash inside of Windows Sandbox. Ironically for me, it doesn't crash for me on Windows Sandbox ever, but it has now started crashing for me on Windows proper itself. So that's kind of strange, but let's jump into the snipping tool. So this is the snipping tool. Uh, that's essentially what it is right there. Now, before I even get into this, uh, I actually had uh, uh, the way, when I first updated the computer to this point, 132 release, uh, none of these apps had been updated yet. And I was confused because it said that's what's included in this build. So it turns out just like when you first get Windows uh, Windows 11, at least when the first build ever came out, uh, you got to go to the Microsoft store and then you got to uh, get updates. Once you get updates, then you will see that all of the icons, if there are any up icon updates, they will be changed and everything like that. You'll see the, all of those apps that they talked about uh, will in fact update and that's when you'll get those new experiences. <clears throat> So you can see here, uh, this is the new snipping tool. And um, yeah, it looks pretty good before uh, the new button, right? It didn't have a rounded corners around it. In fact, let me make it a little bigger so you guys can read it. There we go. So the new button, it did not have uh, rounded corners on it before. It was just square and it had like an up arrow on it or a down arrow on it to show more. Um, now it shows rounded corners. So if you like rounded corners, they're really going all out with that nowadays. It looks like the aliasing, the anti-aliasing on the corners of this application looks much better than what it's been in the past for other applications. There was a weird pixelation in the corner there and I don't see it on this application. So I hope they are starting to fix that now. They're finally realizing that, hey, this has been an issue for a while, let's fix it. So, but. This is basically the new experience. You click that, you see it looks different. Um, in fact, if I click rectangle mode, it's rectangle mode of window mode, uh, full screen mode and things like that. That's snipping it. Now they say you can hit Windows key shift S to do that. So if I press that now, you can see that I can, you see the overlay for a snipping tool. 
X to exit out. Uh, you got the full screen. You got the window snip, which is the one I use the most because it can snip specific spots. I hope the capture is actually showing this. Um, and then you got your freeform snip and your regular snip, your rectangle snip. Now, if the capture is not showing this, uh, I will just put screenshots up so that you guys can see what that new uh, experience looks like. Uh, so exiting out of that, you can see that's essentially it. That is the snipping tool. Things look pretty straightforward and pretty good. Um, nothing really crazy here. So let's move on to the calculator. It's very minor because it is a calculator. Uh, so you can see the calculator also got its update. You can keep it on top so that no matter what you do, uh, it'll always stay on top. Uh, that's always been there as usual, but I don't like that. I'll just leave it how it is. You can stretch it. You've always been able to stretch it, but this is just how it looks when you stretch it to the ridiculous uh, levels when you make the calculator full screen for some reason. Uh, this is how it looks, typing in numbers. These are how the fonts look like. I believe it's using Sego UI variable, their display font. Um, so that way it kind of is like a vectorized font that makes it look good on displays regardless. Uh, all of the buttons on the calculator as usual are, if you look very closely, and I'll probably zoom in for you guys, um, have rounded corners on it. So again, if you like rounded corners, you'll like Windows 11, kind of, maybe. But that's the trend going forward is a lot of more rounding on everything like that to make it feel more friendly and not, uh, not so harsh on your eyes and things like that. So that's pretty much it for the calculator. I can't really, not really much to showcase in that. Uh, so now we're going into the mail application. Now I'm not really gonna scroll past these screens here so that way you don't see any of the other emails on there. But for the purposes of testing here, this is essentially uh, the mail experience right there. You can see how it looks for that. It looks a little different. This is still relatively square, it's fine. Uh, there's still those highlights when you put your mouse nearby like that. It looks good um, It looks good overall. They didn't go too crazy with the rounding again the aliasing on the black background You'd usually see pixelation. I don't see too much pixelation anymore. It looks good now. It looks like how it should be um, Obviously, I am not running in my full native resolution of my monitor I'm running it 1080 for recording purposes, but I'll see how it looks when I record it on when I actually take a look on my full 5120 by 1440 maybe if it changes something because it's a non-conventional screen uh, so yeah you can see that click on an email you'll see that just like that hey you get a shout out marquez oliviera um, so yeah that's essentially the mail they didn't really change anything with it um, you can view it with light background and a dark background that kind of hurt my eyes uh, you can see the drop down list the zoom and all that stuff that's pretty much it um, let's minimize that. Now let's go into the calendar. The calendar also got its little refresh. It looks different in a light and dark theme as well, and you can change that. So if you go over here to your personalization by right clicking your desktop and just going to personalize, you can change the theme. Uh, for those of you who have activated Windows, uh, it's you can get more options, but for me, this is what I get because I am changing my storage device and I don't want to have to pay for Windows twice. So I will wait on that. But uh, going through, you can see here uh, you have the various themes. And if I click on the light theme, so we can check out the calendar in light theme, everything updates, starts to hurt our eyes. But you can see all of the stuff here going on, how it looks. It looks good. Uh, what happens if I move it around? It's not, it does, it does pretty similar thing. Yeah, it looks, it looks good. I got to say. Again, in the light theme, the aliasing on the corners, it's not bad. It doesn't have that weird pixelation anymore. I'm not sure when they fixed it because I just noticed that it changed uh, just now looking at it. So that looks good. Let's change back to dark theme. And actually, you know what? Let me show you the calculator in light theme too. So this is the light theme for the calculator as well. See, it looks pretty good there. Minimize that. Let's go back to dark because that's just what I like it as. It doesn't hurt my eyes so much. So I like the animation transition too. Just off the side uh and then yeah that's that's pretty much it they changed the mail the calendar the snipping tool the calculator they updated it refreshed the look of it um they all look pretty good to me and let's go back to the build itself the build notes so they say here when upgrading from windows 11 to Win from windows to windows 11 from windows 10 or when installing an update to windows 11 some features may be depreciated uh, there was a blog post on another website 
that tells us all about the depreciated things they're disabling edge or sorry internet explorer uh it says desktop wallpaper cannot be run from device to device so basically if you sign in with your microsoft account which for those of you home users you will have to when you get windows 11 uh before on windows 10 whatever wallpaper you had on your on another computer when you sign in with that same microsoft account on another on a different computer that wallpaper would carry over um, that's not happening anymore. They're changing some other things. Math input panel is disappearing because it's inside edge now. Um, it says math recognizer will install on demand and includes math input panel and recognize. So they're just merging it together. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other things. It says S mode is only available now on home edition and so on snipping tool and all that stuff. So yeah, hope that was informative to you all about this latest build. We got some four um, app updates, not too crazy. They didn't really change much of it. Paint is still to be determined in terms of how it will officially look like. I did look at the leak of Microsoft Paint. We look like we have a one Outlook application as well. Uh, it's supposed to be coming out. Um, and then we have a bunch of other applications coming out that are gonna be redesigned. So stay tuned for those. And as always, I always like to end with if you are a developer or know of a developer developing apps on Windows, and at least at this point on the Amazon App Store as well, send them my way. I would love to take a look at what they're working on. Maybe it'll be put into a video to take a look at it and show all of you worldwide. So my name is Kwaku. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and take care.